I Dennis, don't... you've been busy shooting a show, haven't you? What do you mean? Do you mean uh, what we do for relaxation? Like basically, when you like not you're not shooting, or like you know you have those like moments of like final piece that mm. you don't. Well, worry. the first thing you have to understand about an actor is that we live our lives in a state of constant panic. <laughs> like, we never work again. That we will somehow starve yes. to death. Yes. Yeah. 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 So relaxation is. Yeah, it doesn't really exist. So we what we do is you either get together and have coffee and talk about how much you're nervous about not working. Right. Or you talk about how the job you might get. Uh -huh. Or you actually go to the gym and not talk about it or think about it. Or you go to an audition or you actually do something. And a lot of actors do do a project in the hiatus to do something else. But to be actually honest with you, you know, we are creative beings and it's hard to turn off. So when you finish with this job, you still have that desire to create. And so I know all of us up here have different outlets and um, I know that a lot, a lot of us uh, write scripts and, and shoot things. Um, I also make boxes. I make Cornell boxes. They're uh, dioramas or artworks, and I make them for people. And um, I really enjoy that. It's a way to express myself. And I also am uh, doing another series for FX right now, which is going to be coming out in October. We're kind of doing two things. But all of us find an outlet for it because you want to come back in the season charged up with other stuff. And you have to investigate other things in order to be filled back up again. We were talking about that today, Jim and I. Yeah, you put that really well. I eat a lot. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I go visit my wolf all the time. I go visit Thunder up at the ranch he lives at. Aww. We take him for walks. <laughs> I just pictured you eating and walking your wolf. <laughs> right? Going to the gym and walking the wolf. Long, long shirtless walks through. <laughs> They just throw some raw meat on the ground and they just go at it. <laughs> um, I directed my first movie. But... Hey, go come out. We'll bring, it, we'll bring it to Atlanta and we can talk about it. Um, but I also uh, plays at our acting school and then uh, about a year and a half ago, my, my teacher, a very great man, asked me to come on to the staff of their acting school and, and I, I teach. Um, teach over there at Playhouse West and um, gonna be doing some movies and stuff and making some more movies but it's exactly what he said the creative impulse isn't something that <coughs> is uh, switched off or on by a paycheck or an employer it's, it's there and I find that you know the best way to really be an actor is to be acting always um, and it's just what I love to do best so why not right there, it's almost impossible for me to relax, actually. I just keep going and going, and then I have my causes, and then I got married, which is very time-consuming. <laughs> and, uh, and I've got my pets, and then I paint, and then I'm just, you know, it's seven days a week. It's, I can't sort of, I haven't figured out how to sort of punch that clock and punch out. So I just keep going and going. Every hiatus, I'm like, wow, we have four months, I'm gonna come back rested, and I'm gonna, and then I come back exhausted. Like <laughs> shooting True Blood is actually a little simpler. At least I'm doing one thing. Yeah. You know. And Jim, you were talking about making movies. Why is your production company called 120 Productions? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is so dumb. <laughs> Way back in 1998, my buddies and I were listening to a uh, wonderful album called Wu Tang Forever. <laughs> it's a little skit before one of the songs, and, and this young kid's on the phone, and he said, uh, I'm studying 120 right now, I'll call you back at the God album, right? So my buddies and I used the number 120 as a code for the next five years, whenever we were going to try to make advances of the sensual. Uh, variety at parties and stuff, so the other guy would know to go away. <laughs> so now it's 120 again, right? So that's how it started. Later, when I quit being a scumbag, <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, and uh, I found it really awesome and kind of uh, inspiring that the idea 
that at the time of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, there were 120 people that believed. And out of that small group, you know, especially in the beginning, uh, there, was a, there was a movement, a movement of love, a movement of, um, uh, of, of sharing that kind of important truth. And so I dropped the scumbag meeting and picked up the new one. And uh, now that's the name of the company. <laughs> Next question. Hi. First, I would just like to say to Ms. Bauer von Stratton, thank you so much for the way you advocate for animals, because there are so few people that really want to do that. But my question was about um, Pam and Eric. They have one of the healthiest relationships between a progeny and a maker in the whole series, if you're like compared to everyone else. So I was just wondering, um, do you have any idea how much more we're going to see of them in season five? Because they are a really big fan favorite, and we all love them so much. <laughs> Thank you. I'll cry on two counts because I love my animals and I love Alex. <laughs> and um, I love that relationship. It's really, I think it's the healthiest relationship we'll ever see on earth in a weird way. You know, they really, um, I just thought of that line, I've been with you over 100 years bucking and killing and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> But they really get each other, and it's an interesting relationship because, and I can't wait next year to see more of the genesis of that, because we have these different layers of it. You know, it's sort of a, a daughter-father relationship, and then, but how did it start? And, and they both would die for each other, so it's really a, a very, sort of a pure romance. And, um, and it's very easy, you know, when you're acting, you borrow, I try to borrow from anywhere I can. So it's nice with Alex that I like him so much. So it's easy. And he's very funny. So we just laugh all day. And we're laughing up until after they call action. They're like, guys, we're trying to shoot a show. We're like, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, then we go in and kill somebody. So. <laughs> it's hysterical. <laughs> Hi, um, uh, sorry, I'm a big fan of um, Okay, as true bees, as you know, we all like to call ourselves, you know, everyone has their favorite scene or, you know, favorite storyline. I was wondering, um, as actors, um, what's your favorite, is there a scene or a storyline that really sticks out or is your, you really enjoyed to play during, like, throughout the series? Or? I was a big fan of the Jessica Hoyt uh, storyline. Um, I just loved it. <laughs> I mean, two, I thought two very surprising characters. I didn't see them coming out of the left field. Because Jessica was made in that one scene, you kind of think, well, where is this going to go? And then, I, and then when they got together, it was so sweet. And it was so beautiful watching these two people come together. And you kind of knew that it couldn't end, end that well just because then, you know, the show's over. But, um, but I, really, I really enjoyed watching that. I, I thought it was just a really cool, young, innocent love and two really interesting characters. Yeah, that's a great story. And it's, it's, again, these great actors and theater people because you guys worked on that a lot in your own time and came in early and sat and talked. And, um, and it really shows. And I, there's so many storylines that I love. I mean, I'm such a fan of the show and I just loved, you know, seeing Sam do that imitation. And, you know, and there's so many great things that I just adore. I have to say one thing that I was really looking forward to seeing was that whole scene last week with um, Terry and Chris Bauer, you know, that whole bell floor therapy method, you know, <laughs> just at the table read, I was like, oh, yeah, that's so great, because, you know, I just love both of their characters so much. I mean, I love, Abby, I love Jason Stackhouse, I could watch read the paper and or try to read the paper. <laughs> so there's, there's so much, but that scene was, I was really excited about. I, uh, you know, I, I love I love the story we got to uh, act, it, and, you know, for a lot of reasons, but there's, there's something really, uh, really, really touching about uh, Bill having kind of like been out like 
been, uh, been, been out in a, in a place where maybe thought there wouldn't, there wouldn't be love um, for a, a very long time, and then having somebody look over and, and love them, right? I think that that's, you know, when you wrote that, you had to know that's what every heart is after. And, and uh, I, you know, I can't watch the meeting and his gratitude for having someone look at him lovingly and being able to give it back is about the best thing you could be asked to act with it. And it's a terrific story, so, yeah. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> there was a point in season three where, like in the books, Debbie says to Alcide, you wouldn't give me a baby. And just that one line made me think so much about what it must have been like for him growing up. And, uh, you know, for him to hit puberty and have this thing happen to him and, and feel like, you know, he was probably the biggest, strongest of the kids and, and not be able to play sports and, you know, not be able to ask that girl out that he always wanted to ask out and kind of watching the other kids live in this life through a window. And, um, and then to get to the point where, you know, he didn't even want to reproduce so he couldn't, you know, he wouldn't even want to carry on his own race because of what he went through. I, I don't know. It's just, just one simple line like that, you know, really made me think a lot. But, um, you know, other than that, I mean, I was, I was a big fan. I thought the struggle of Godric was, re was really interesting. You know, this, this monster who, who is, who's tired of being a monster and um, would rather not even exist than, than to cause harm, I think, is, is, is very interesting. And very human, once again. You know, it's, it's very human. Huh. <laughs> um, the scene in the book where Godric dies is very similar in some ways and very different from the way Godric dies on the show. Uh, but he does meet the son, and Sookie is the only witness. And I, in the books, that's one of the, my favorite scenes I ever wrote, uh, because I love the fact that that she came to see such a bad man die, uh, and that was his last experience of love. So I really enjoyed that a lot. Uh, and I have to say, I'm a big fan of the possum drowning. Because I think if you have a TV show where you can drown a possum, you know, that just says something. <laughs> <laughs> First, before I ask my question, I just want to say to Kristen,